Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Serena and in today's video we are going to be doing some quilting on satin so I can make the house coat of my dreams. And so I wanted to show you the materials that I used before we get into actual sewing. I filmed the quilting portion in the fall of 2021 so I didn't get it super detailed because as many of you know I was in the middle of a move while um, during that time so I'm just kind of backtracking to show you the materials that I used so that way there is no confusion when the quilting portion starts so to begin with I used this low loft quilting batten um, at queen size then I use this quilt basting spray to sandwich the pieces together because satin can um, mark really easily, have runs, um, and stain really easily too. So I wanted to reduce the possibility of those things happening. So instead of basting with thread or using too much marker, I used a basting spray instead. You're going to need really thin Microtex needles. These are all used, but... Here's what they would look like if you buy them in the package. You can get them from Singer um, as well, but this is my preferred type of needle. They're really high quality and very consistent, unlike um, Singer it tends to sometimes not be as consistent as these. A walking foot, if you have one. I don't use a walking foot in this video because at the time I didn't have a sewing room. I was at my old place and I didn't have access to the machine that this went to. It was in the garage. So I quilted without this walking foot, which ended up being okay because this walking foot does not have a guide bar, which you'll see in the video that I used to help me keep my spacing. And then you're gonna need a guide bar if you're quilting satin, because again, you can mark the distance between the stitches if you're using a cotton or anything else that's forgiving. But with the satin, I wanted to reduce how much I used any kind of marking or pins. So I used this quilting bar. I had to add like little clothespins to keep the, the attachment piece from moving too much and losing my spacing because it moves left to right to adjust the spacing on this. And this one's pretty old and it's moved out of place. I have another one that it has that's tight so I'm gonna probably sw swap that out but at the time um, this is what I had so I just made it work and then you're going to need to make swatches so that way you know how much spray you can put on your batting and satin that is just enough without it bleeding through the fabric this is washable but I don't plan on washing my um, satin I'm probably gonna get the house coat dry cleaned instead and you're going to need some sort of a backing fabric. This is a cotton batting fabric that I used um, for my scrap for this. But I used a poly cotton to back the actual piece. It, if you're going to line your coat, it doesn't matter what your backing looks like. I lined mine so it didn't matter. But initially I was unsure about whether or not I was going to line it. So I went with like a yellow. But eventually I did line it with a white um, with a white um, flannel backed satin so yeah this is my swatch um, I used quilting spray um, one thing that I learned with prepping the fabric which I didn't specifically say when I was making the video because I was in a hurry was that when you cut I used panels uh, so I used square panels and you could mark the center on both sides like an X and make that your original guide. Or you can just press a crease into it to avoid having to mark all together. So if you press a crease into it and then sew down the center points, then that will give you a place to start your guide. And quickly before I start, basically your presser foot is gonna go down this line and then your guide is gonna sit here. So then when you put your presser foot over here, then your guide sits there. And every time you go, the spacing continues. Um, so that's how it'll work. And you'll see that more in the video. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that introduction wasn't up too long, but I hope it gives you clarity for what's to come. 
So this is the pattern I'll be using today. It is a McCall's 3885. It's really hard to find. It took me a little over a year to find this pattern and it didn't have an envelope. So this is what it looks like for the bodice portion. I'll be using the quilting satin, satin and the bottom, the skirt, I'll be using a brocade, a poly brocade. So that is what I'll be doing. And then for the ribbon, I'm doing view A. For the ribbon, I'll be using a velvet, a white velvet ribbon. Right now, I am marking the center of my panel with my yardstick and my water soluble marker from Dritz. And I do this on some panels and then I iron a crease in others, but then I realized that the satin was doing really well with the marker, so I just moved forward with marking the panels. Now I'm stitching the first line and I need to mention that my spacing is one inch by one inch and I'm sewing this on the diagonal so that way I can get more of a diamond shape I guess instead of it being perfect boxes in a grid like a gingham. So that is what I'm doing here. I'm rolling one side because this is not specifically a quilting machine, so it doesn't have that really long machine base. So I find that just rolling up the side that's closest to the sewing machine helps a lot. Um, also, I would recommend that when you cut your pieces, that your batting in the center is larger than your satin or your main fabric and your backing fabric so that way your batting does not shrink inside of your quilting because sometimes that can happen so that is what I'm showing you there to start on the edge of your fabric and not on top of the batting like if the batting extends start on top of your fabric and not on top of the batting and so there you go. And all you have to do is line that quilter. If you're using a vintage machine, then that quilting bar is called a quilter. And um, modern machines, I think they call it a quilting bar. So yeah, you put your quilter on your last seam and then you continue to sew. And that is what I do over and over until I get what I want. Once all the lines are going in one direction, then I flip it to the next diagonal and sew down the other way. Now I'm cutting off all those extra strings because you do not want this project to get really messy and tangly. Now we go down the other diagonal and mark the center point for this and then you sew that center stitch and that center stitch will be a guide to sewing the remainder just like we did the first go around. So you want to start off with the center so that way you can use that as a guide for your quilter. And there you have it. So I already cut out the bodice quilted pieces. The only pieces I have not cut out is the sleeves for this piece. But here's the back. Um, this is the one of the front pieces and this is the other front piece. It has like a self-facing so you fold it over to get the facing. 
this project has taken me so long because of the button with this fabric being quilted i can't use my button holder to put to do my bound buttons and i also even if i could use the button holder to do my bound buttons the um fabric would just be extremely bulky because as you know you have to add another layer of fabric folded over in between to make bound buttons A lot of time passed for me to make this house coat was because I was busy, but more than that, because this house coat, apart from the quilting, is not a time consuming or even hard project. But I worked so hard to get this far in the project in terms of quilting. The quilting took me, I think it took me a week. I did a panel a day. But it took me so long to quilt and I took my time that I was afraid of ruining the fabric. Now it's time to cut the skirt. I actually put a piece of tape um, over a stain to make sure that I can cut around that. But you always want to inspect stuff that's not necessarily machine washable to make sure that you can cut around any stains. And I like to use tape, you can mark it with a pin to make sure that you don't add that into your garment. But then otherwise to that, I think that I'll probably get this dry cleaned. But yeah, it's time to cut. Um, make sure that you cut in the same direction uh, because this print seems to all be going this way. So yeah, just wanna make sure that you line everything up and you don't end up with upside down pieces. So this is one sleeve. I positioned it to where I could avoid parts of the satin that I feel like is just not the nicest. And for the first one, I'm just gonna cut it out with my scissors because the tissue tends to slip a little on the satin when I use the rotary cutter. So I'm gonna cut it out like that. I'm trying to save as much satin as possible, like big pieces of satin as possible because I want to make some matching slippers to go with this house coat. And really the slippers are just gonna be for show and pictures and things like that because I do not want to wear down my pretty slippers. Um, like I'm a slippers in the house type of person. I wear them a lot. And I feel like if I were to wear these on a regular basis, then they would probably be used complete. Like their whole lifespan would be over in like a month or two because I always wear slippers indoors. So for these slippers, I'm post mostly probably just going to take really nice pictures in them and I'll wear them like every now and again. Like I guess if I decided to dress up in the house, but for the most part, I would like to just have slippers that go with the house coat forever. Maybe I'll wear, make two pair, depending on how many I have left, how much um, satin I have left. Because I did make this giant test piece 
just to see how big of a panel I could quilt without needing a walking foot. And so I have a giant piece of quilted scrap that's kind of a mess, but I feel like I can cut around the worst parts of it to get the slippers. So I might end up just with two pairs, one that I can wear on a regular basis and one that just stays kind of mint condition to go with the house coat. Second panel, my final panel for this project. And I can go ahead and cut out the second sleeve. So basically I'm gonna turn it to see which side I think looks best, which this one I don't think has as many flaws, I don't think. But either way, yeah. And then I'm gonna cut it out with a rotary cutter for this go around. We have a bodice. I am so excited. It's time to attach the skirt. I am so, so happy. Like, I cannot wait to be able to just put this on and twirl because it's been a long time coming. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach the skirt and then start sewing it back on at the sewing machine. I am so proud because it's resembling a coat now. This is the part where like the excitement and the adrenaline of the project kicks in and makes it really hard to put it down Okay, so as I was sewing, I realized that there are parts, like right where I did like a stay stitching to keep the, um, to not stretch the skirt portion, I realized that it is kind of stretching a bit. So what I'm going to do is stitch on some interfacing because I've already started sewing uh, so I'm gonna stitch on some interfacing this is fusible interfacing and then I'm just gonna iron it afterwards to help protect the seam a little um, and I hope that it keeps it from like tugging because I feel like the weave of this is just not very tight and since this is going around my waist and I did not adjust this so that way it's super fitted so hopefully it doesn't add any tug but you never know so better safe than sorry I'm just gonna add this interfacing and then I'm gonna iron it down afterwards Also, this interfacing will not be seen because again, I will be lining this. Um, hopefully adding a lining will also take some strain off of the waist. But I don't know for sure and I don't wanna test it. Um, I work too hard to not have something that's going to last a really long time. So hopefully this is a smart idea. I don't know. And I pretty much did front seams everywhere else on the vertical seams except for the side seams. And that kind of scared me about putting pockets in this because once I noticed that 
like it was kind of loose where I stitched. I was like, do I want that weight on the pockets? But then it's going to be lined, so a lot of the weight isn't gonna be on the pocket. It's gonna be on the lining pocket. So we'll see. It does make me nervous because I do make my things for actual functionality. Like this is not a museum piece. So I really wanted to work. Right? Like this is supposed to be my house coat, my nice house coat. But I'm also nervous. I'm really nervous about this. Um This is supposed to be the part where I'm cheering and not necessarily uh, on the edge of my seat. I thought those nerves were reserved for quilting the satin. Okay, here is the house coat on the dress form. I am so happy with it. It's unlined right now but it's so pretty. I love the way that it drapes still. Um, the only thing that I feel like I would change in this project would be to interface all of the seams, like just cut little strips like I did for around here on all the seams just to be sure. But um, I'm gonna line it and hopefully that takes some of the stress off of the seams. Um, I'm just, I'm really thrilled with this piece so far, um, the lining is on the floor. I actually washed this, so it should save me from having to dry clean the whole thing right away because the fabric is clean. The inside that's going to be touching me is clean. Um, I'm just so excited. I really am. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this cut out and see how, how much I can get done today because like, if I could finish this this week, I will. That's how excited I am about just being able to wear it not even share it but just to be able to wear it so I am going to now that I'm in the lining the lining's gonna be pretty simple I'm gonna kick it up a notch so it is lining time I'm about to seam the side backs to the center back and no fancy seam finishes for this the fabric doesn't seem to be fraying that much it's never gonna go into the wash so I am pretty um certain confident that this will be fine without a fancy seam finish if anything i might pink the seams but that's about it and of course this is the lining to prep the lining the only thing that i did different was cut off the seam allowance on the bottom of it so that way it's a little bit shorter than the main house coat and for when I cut the bodice section I'm going to cut away at the center back neck where the um, facing for the neck is and I'm also going to cut off the facing for the button panel off of that piece <laughs> Next up is the back bodice. I'm gonna cut this out exactly the way that it is and then I'm going to cut off some of this using the facing piece as a guide. I'll show you that. Um, and so that way I, I can attach it to the main piece, which the facing is already there. So I have to cut this off. And that's kind of hard to explain. I guess I don't really know the language to use to explain that, so you'll just see. I am leaving 5 eighths of seam allowance on here. I don't know if this is 
a good idea or not <laughs> but it'll work if, if I need to cut it more I will later if it's too wide then I will put a pleat in it so I did end up putting a pleat in it because it was too wide. I also had to make some adjustments to the front bodice pieces as well, but it ended up working out. And after this, this pretty much completes my process. I get it all sewn together and I finally have a coat. I'll have to show you what the inside looks like and me wearing it. So this is the lining. It is fully lined all around, including the sleeves. I lined it with a flannel backed satin so it's this really pre pretty white but it's also very warm and comfortable I have snap buttons at the top three I use the vintage kit for that and then I have regular standard covered buttons with buttonholes on the side thank you guys so much for watching this video I hope you enjoy this I created this with just my home sewing self-taught knowledge. I am not a professional, so I hope this is very helpful to you if you need a place to begin or if you're considering making a quilted garment as well. Thank you so much again. If you would like to follow me in real time, follow me on Instagram at Serena underscore. If you would like to support my art more than just liking and subscribing and following you can follow me or support me by giving me a tip on my ko-fi and i'll leave the link for that below thank you again so much i truly appreciate you being here and i will see you in my next one now for the reveal